Premiere Pro has a full set of closed caption features. You can import closed caption files or create those files from scratch inside Premiere Pro. Once you bring them in, you can add them to a sequence and then edit them. You can edit the text, the color, the background, the position, and the timing. Once you've completed your work, you can export your sequence as a video file with a sidecar closed caption file, or you can embed the closed caption inside a QuickTime MOV file. We're working with assets provided by Adobe for demonstration purposes only, so there's no project file associated with this lesson. Let me show you how all those things work. We'll start off by importing a closed caption file. You import it the standard way by double clicking in an empty space here, or do Control or Command I, or go File Import. Opens up the import dialog box, and here is an SCC file, a Cenarist closed caption file, one of the four types of closed caption files you can work with here inside Premiere Pro. I'll just double click on that. Brings it in, looks like a video file with no audio, which is kind of what it is really. I'll drag it over here to the sequence. It was created to work with this clip here, so it's the same length more or less. Now if we take a look at it, let's see what happens. Nothing, because we need to enable the program monitor for closed captioning. To do that, I go to the Program Monitor panel menu up here in the upper right-hand corner, click on that, go down to Closed Captioning Display, and click on Enable. Now when I play it, you'll see that see. stuff show up right there. There's the closed caption with a black background. Now, I want to be able to see these closed captions. I can do that right here in this clip. I can expand the view here a bit like that, and there they are. can't read them, but if I expand the view a bit by pressing the plus key a few times, there they are, and you can see the endpoints and the outpoints. I can't adjust them here. It'd be nice, but I can't. So how do I adjust them? I open up the Captions panel. Go to the Captions panel, I go to Window, and there's Captions. Opens up the Captions panel here with nothing inside it. The reason there's nothing inside it is because you need to make this clip active. And there are those captions, in order to achieve greatness, etc. Let's listen to this for a second. To achieve greatness, you have to go through a lot of pain. He sort of finishes saying pain right there. So let me adjust the timing of that. I'll go over here to this one, and it goes from 209 to 320, but the next one starts at 320. So if I want to try to move this to the right, it won't work because this one's in the way. So I need to move the one to the right a little bit farther to the right first, like that. You see that makes a little gap there. Now I'm going to take this one up here, a lot of pain, have this go past 406 to see what happens. Get a message saying you can't go past it, so try that again. Go to something less than 406, something like that. You can change the color of the text. Let me go over here, and we'll just hover over here for a while and see how that looks. We'll go to this particular one here, go through a lot of pain again. To change the color, you just click on this T over here. Let me expand the view so you can see all the features there. Click on T, and then click on the color swatch. Right now it's white. We can change it to one of these colors here. We go to, let's say, cyan. You're just affecting the top line there. If I select all of it like that, then click on this again, then it'll do the whole thing. Sometimes you have two different colors in one closed caption because you have two different people speaking back and forth to identify one person versus the other. You don't have to have a black background. To change that, you click on this little swatch there, and click on the background color over here. Here are the various colors. I can make it transparent, like that. If I want to change the color now, I go over here. I can't change it by just clicking on this. That won't work. I need to go back here and click on either semi-transparent or opaque. Then you can change the color again to something, let's say, like white. I can change the position of it as well. I can use this little grid here. This is kind of a default grid here. Right now it's bottom center. I can do top center like that. And sometimes you want to move text around because there might be a super down here or a logo or something like that. You want to move it someplace else so you're not covering it up. Put it like that. You can move it to the left as well, to the right. And you can do this on a per line or per word basis too. These little numbers here correspond to the XY grid. They're not really large numbers. The numbers vary depending on how much text you have. Let's say we take the X to 11. Y from 1 to 15 or so. It depends on the amount of text. If we had one line of text, it would be 15. Two lines is 14. That puts it at the bottom like that. We'll just put it back down here to the center at the bottom. Sometimes you put in little music symbols to indicate that music is playing. Let's slide to the right here a bit there. Here's a place where music is playing. And so there's the music note there, and it's positioned at the top. I'll just scroll on down here a little ways. You can see it. There it is, and you can see that it's positioned at the top here in that little grid. We can move that around too, but we want to get away from this text here, so we put it at the top like that. You can create closed captions from scratch. Let me change to this other sequence here. I want to add closed captioning to this. Now, at the time I did this tutorial, the full closed captioning process was not completely implemented, but I'll show you the steps you go through to add a new closed caption clip. Go down to this new item icon here, click on closed captions like that. You can accept the default setting for the current sequence or change it like that. Click OK. And you choose what kind of standard you want. There are only two to choose from, and CEA 608 is the default. Then you can choose the stream from 1 to 4, and CC1 is the default there. If I click OK, it won't work now, so I'll just click Cancel. I have one that I made in advance here that I copied from this one, so I'll add this to this track right there. 
listen to the beginning here. Just hurry up and get your stuff. Taxi's waiting. Just hurry up and get your stuff. Taxi's waiting. So I want to add a closed caption for that little portion there. So I'll click on this to make it active. Go back to closed captions here. And there's nothing there. Well, I need to add a caption by pressing this little plus button. Let's see what he said again here. Just hurry up and get your stuff. Taxi's waiting. So I'll just type it in here. Change the timing here, moving in a little farther like that. Expand the view a little bit like so. Plus key a couple times. There it is. And notice it says, just hurry up and get your stuff. Hmm, kind of falls off there. You can only get so much text on one line. So I would go over here and press the enter key and spread that out a little bit. And now it shows up on a second line like that. So you need to be careful about how much text you put on one line. You can't change the size of the font. You can only change the positioning and how much appears on one line. So that's how you create closed captioning from scratch. But let's say I want to export the sequence. I'm going to go back to this one, export this guy. So I go File, Export, go to Media. Basically, every single file format here allows you to export the closed captions, but they allow you to do it only as a sidecar file, it's called, not within the video itself. Let me go pick one over here. Let's say we go to H.264, which is kind of standard for a lot of folks. And going down here to Captions, there's a Captions tab. Export options, None or Sidecar Files, the two things you have. And then when you choose the Sidecar File, you can choose the file format from one of the four types that work here. Scenarist is pretty common, as is Mac Caption, but we'll choose Scenarist here. And if I click Export, it'll export the video file in a separate closed caption file. Just as we imported the closed caption file, we'll export one that now will have these edits in them or you can embed it inside a QuickTime file. So I'm gonna to go to Format and change to QuickTime. And down here in Captions, in addition to None and Sidecar, you've got Embed and Output File, which is pretty cool. It gets stored inside the video file. And I've done that already for this video. Let me show you how that works. This is that video file. In order to achieve greatness, you have... aren't seeing any closed captions, but we can turn them on here inside the QuickTime player. So I go to View, Show Closed Caption, and there they are. You have to go through a lot of pain. So that's how you work with closed captions inside Premiere Pro.